Hey, hey everybody, welcome back to the channel and to another video. This time we'll talk about Nux auto imports and how to make it even more amazing than it is already. Thank you. So, all of you know Nux auto import is a breeze to work with, but of course we can even do a bit more than just auto importing utils, composables, components and so on and so on. So in this video, we'll take a look at three scenarios. The first one will be adding more folders so Nux can auto import components out of them. The second one is to take a look at JavaScript and TypeScript files and also there add another folder that Nux can import these files. So not only utils, composables, you name it. And the third scenario will be, and here it comes, automatically import packages. Like, not the whole package necessarily, but single export from these packages. And as a little bonus, I will also tell you how that works in Nitro, because that will be very simple. Okay, the first use case. Here we start. So, that's the good part. Everything is configurable on nux.config.ts, as you know. And this is exactly where we have to start to add another folder for the component auto imports as well. And let's add, let's say, an app components folder, right? So in there, we want to have all components that are app-wide available. And maybe let's also add a default prefix. So in our components, um, top of a key, we'll just write an array and say, OK, um, an object in there, the directory is app components. And the prefix that we want to give is app. So far, so good. Easy. Um, let's now create a test.view component in our app components uh, folder and open our app.view and just insert it there. And we'll see. Okay, nice. That works. We even get, uh, yeah, the, the component to display and also we get the information inside our editor. And now let's create another so-called default entry .view component, because why not, in our components folder. Um, and also add that to the app.view to show that both folders work. And here we now realize, uh, we accidentally override the whole config from before. So as soon as we define actually um, directories in the next config TS, the previous values will be over it. Now there are a few ways how to deal with that. You can either use a next hook to just add another component directory, which is, um, I think, one of the safest ways to use. You can also go the manual way and say, hey, okay, let's just add them um, straight away. The default um, folders, so the components and components uh, global folder to the directory as well. I personally would suggest using a hook there because that's a bit easier. You can do it in own module or just in the nux.config.ts as you can see here. And now after adding that, if we check once again the output of our app.view in our application, we see whew, all good, everything works as it should. Great. Okay. And now the second case. So we want to auto import some TypeScript or JavaScript files from another directory, not utils, not composables. Okay, how do we do that? Well, once again, the next config comes to our rescue. And here we use the so-called imports key. Everything we'll configure there will be used by uh, another package called unimport from the unjs org, and it's a breeze to work with. As a fun fact, you can also use this outside of Nux, so in other projects where you might need to auto import stuff. There you go can use it. Okay, but what, what are we actually doing there, right? All right, in, in imports, we set the dirs, so directories. And here we can just very simply add what should be auto imported. Okay, so let's add something, I don't know. Uh, let's say we want to add some constants, right? Um, so let's add a constants folder there, create the folder and create a new file, let's say math.ts and add um, the pi constant there, which is, as we all know, <laughs> three. Of course not, but 
we just round down here. But we, we don't want to make it too complicated, right? And now let's go into our app that view again and just import it without importing it. So just use it. And we see even if we just use a plane and a template, it will work. It will show the, the three. And now you might wonder, okay, do we run into the same issue as before with, with the utils and the composables? Are they, are they not auto import anymore? Do we have to set it up as well? And the good news is, no, don't worry in this case, because there are two slightly different mechanisms that will work out of the box still. So if we now have our utils folder and create another file there and um, create a function, let's say the answer to everything, that just returns 42. And also this one we will just use without auto importing straight away in our applet view. We will see, no, all fine. It works as it should. 42 is there. Great. Okay. Use case two. Also check. We're really on roll here. Now let's head to the third use case though. So we want to auto import exports from other packages. And once again, the imports key is a lifesaver here. More specifically, unimport is our lifesaver here. But to actually implement that, it depends a little bit on the package. So it depends how the package is bundled and there are lots of ways. Very important here, we use the presets key in our case because we want to set up the presets for certain packages. So unimport can import the exports of these. You'll get it in a bit. First of all, you can check if the package you want to auto import is maybe already available in the presets database of unimport. So you can just write on the presets, um, try out in that area if like say view composition API is in there, that's great. Pina is in there, lots of other um, Python packages as well. Maybe not yours. So could be that maybe afterwards you can just create a PR. Also for that, link in the description because yeah, sharing is caring, you know. Now we, we'll do a little bit more complex example in our case, which is date FNS. So if we take a look at the structure of the date functions package, we see a lot and that's totally fine. Um, but we also notice that every function that's exported has its own subfolder. So we could now start writing a script and saying, all right, no problem. We'll just go through these, all of the folders and um, auto uh, import the default export there as the name of the folder. We'll just stick it very manual and try it for the add days function. So all we do is, okay, we, we define the, the whole, well, endpoint, so to say, so where it should get the whole info from. We say the actual import name, which will be default, the as, so we actually define the name again because default is so ambiguous, right? And we want to use it as add days. And okay, so we can try it out straight away now. Let's go in our applet view and use add days. Let's say const now equals new date and const tomorrow equals add days now. And I don't know, one makes sense, right? And here we'll see Okay, typings work perfectly. That's great. So TypeScript support is also given. Um, and the function is there. Awesome. So we covered all our three use cases. As I mentioned, depending on the package, the third case can be a bit different. Sometimes you can also get away with just defining the import straight away. It depends on how things are bundled. All in all, you can also take a look at the um, README of unimport because it will also explain you some more goodies. For example, it can also auto scan some things. Um, maybe you can get away with that too. But in our case, it's a little bit of manual work. That's fine. Maybe just send a PR for date FNS in a bit. I'll link it if that's the case. And now the little bonus content. So for Nitro, you can do the same as for the second, the third part, but you just move the imports top level key into nitro.imports. And then it will also work for the server side. Okay, that's it. So we covered lots of things around the onto imports. You know how to deal with all the three use cases, adding new component folders, adding folders for TypeScript and JavaScript files, and even package exports. 
there you go any questions left you know where to put it and don't forget to subscribe and tune in for next video happy hacking everybody